Hello everyone, this is the Kamori by Flex RC. I built mine using the HGLRC F428 flight stack, which includes a 28 amp ESC, an F4 flight controller with an OSD, and the two TX20 VTX. The camera is the Cadex Turbo Micro S1, 1407 4100 KV Brother Hobby Motors, Gem Fan 3052 props. I did add a regular size buzzer and a black XT60. My favorite battery strap, it weighs 123.33 grams. Bottom plate is two millimeters. Pod plates are two millimeters. Motor to motor, I'm getting 135 millimeters. So I got one of these and I built it up mainly because I just wanted to see how it was different. You know, Flex RC is known for kind of a wide stance, almost an H design on their quads. And this one has these little braces between the arms. And that will probably give us quite a bit more durability when, when taking a frontal impact here. But I don't suggest you build it like I do. Matter of fact, on the Flex RC re website, they recommend only going up to a 1404 motor. And that's important to note because... Um, Dimitri will honor the lifetime warranty if you build the frames with the recommended components. Uh, another component that you could use instead of if you're not a fan of this flight stack, you could use the Zeus board in there if you're just going to run 3S on something. Uh, maybe you've got an 1106 motor or 1107 motor you plan to try. Uh, this will fit those various types of motors because they do have these slotted uh, brackets. Um, I find these pods a challenge to get in generally in the back. I don't have a tip or trick. I've done four of these now, five, four or five of these now, and I, I'm just using brute force. It's, uh, I wish I could develop a technique that would work, but oftentimes what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing it with a pair of tool and I'm kind of prying it this way, away, as well as this way and trying to get it to snap in. And generally it does snap in and the nice thing about it being so tight is once you do have it built, your, your components are pretty well protected regardless of whether you use nylon or metal here. Uh, one of the issues that I had with this was tuning it, getting it tuned as tightly as I wanted. And these are very notchy motors. Um, so I don't know if you can hear this, but let's see if we can try. You hear that little winding sound after, you know, you hear the, you hear me hit the prop and then you hear that kind of that whining. Uh, that's from the super strong magnets that are in there. And oftentimes with super strong man magnets, we uh, associate that with uh, flight performance, which it does. These are very notchy motors. They're very torquey. They have gobs of power and they will suck down your battery as much as you can give it. 
Um, in my particular case, getting a two-minute flight was a little bit of a struggle. Um, but back to the tuning part, I think I struggled a little bit with the tuning. You know, obviously, you've seen the flight footage. It flies well. So I don't want to sound as make this uh, more dramatic than it actually is. But I think part of the reason I had tuning issues was there is a fair bit of flex in the frame. And that's another reason why you should probably build this with an 1100 series motor. You can go up to the 1404s as recommended on the FlexRC website. Um, but those motors will be much less torquey they'll have much less quick response uh, than these will and therefore when you hit the throttle hard you won't necessarily have some of the struggles I had with your pid tune and any sort of oscillations that you might have because you know there is a bit of flex in there I'm not actually trying all that hard it's it's giving quite well uh, give you a little closer look I am not a carbon fiber expert so I don't try to play one here on the channel you can see I've I don't know if this is damaged yeah, it is. it is. I finally damaged it. I, I hit this one a few times. I went headlong into a tree once, and I think that's where my damage came from right over here. But again, I'm carrying more mass and more weight than the frame was designed. Uh, so this is a little bit of a proof of concept that you can do it, but it's not recommended by FlexRC, and therefore I'm not recommending it either. But it was an experiment that I wanted to take on. I wanted to try these motors. I think if you're going to fly these motors, if you're looking at the 4100 KVs, you're probably going to have to look at carrying a bigger battery. I actually flew this one a fair bit with the China Hobby Line 650s, which are actually closer probably to 750. I think um, they underrate the batteries a little bit, so it's it's a pretty good sizable battery. And this one I could get a 2, 2, 210 flight out of uh, flying the way I do, the way I like to fly. Uh, so you may look at this, you may look at larger size batteries if you're wanting to run these motors. Uh, this is pretty light for a 1407. You know, it's not as though it's a porky build. This is a light frame. I didn't use bulky, heavy components. I kept things relatively short. I didn't add many extras. And so, you know, this battery, you can, can, you can use this one or a 750 or 850 in order to get longer flight times than you may want to. Uh, but you'll have plenty of torque in the motors, but will you have enough battery to fly? the time that you want to fly. I did enjoy using the Caddx camera. I've tested a few of these over the time. Caddx doesn't send me stuff anymore. I don't know, maybe I made them mad. Um, oh well, but I'll, you know, so I bought this, uh, this is the Turbo S1. Hopefully you can see that right down here. Turbo Micro S1. Can get that in the camera view. I can see it with my eye, but I don't know about in the lens. Maybe that's not so important. But I do like the camera. These cameras do come in slightly heavier than the run cams and the micros, but it's very, very close. That could be a manufacturing difference. Um, so just something that caught me off guard was because this does use a full face, it does actually weigh more than the run cams and the Predators, which they kind of have that cutout that they do on the corners and then they just mount to one side. As far as these stacks go, many people are posting on Facebook and various places about how unreliable they are. I've spoke to this before. I've used these stacks a number of times, and I really have only had problems once. And I don't, I really shouldn't say problems because I did crash. Uh, so I don't know if we're equating crashing and reliability and a failure of a product all together or not but uh, in my particular case i've used these several times and and they've worked out just fine uh, if you don't want to use something like this i would suggest you know getting like a um, a spedix 4-in-1 you can get an acon 4-in-1 that's real small you can just just look on like race day quads or pyro flip and look at their micro stuff and then the uh, matek 401 or the matek 411 flight controller is a nice flight controller and it comes with gummies so the flight controller is already soft mounted so that's kind of taken care of for you they've also got brass inserts that you can put inside those here let me grab one uh, so here's the board it's pretty well laid out I really don't have any complaints about the board itself you can take a closer look at there it's pretty clear and the screen printing the screen printing on this is generally superior to what I see in a lot of others if you look See if I get the camera to focus there on this. You can see how clear the screen printing is. So some extra care has been taken there. But of course these are, I think they're about 30 bucks each. And then we have our gummies here. Those goes right through our holes. They're nice and soft gummies. And so you would thread that through the hole. And that would give you an M3 hole because that's probably M4 I'm guessing. And then you use this brass insert inside the gummy in order to get yourself down to a two millimeter mounting I believe is what we do with that I actually haven't used this board but I know a lot of you pilots prefer this board so I thought I should get a few and I have a few and I will use them here at some point in time in some coming up builds I've been doing a lot of testing on the side things that you haven't seen on the channel well it'll be coming soon
<laughs> at least one of them will be coming soon. Uh, but it, it's another board you should consider if you don't like using the stacks with pins. Um, I've also been using this this Spidex one, or Speedix. I'm not sure how you say that to this day. Um, but there are options. It, it's a good thick board, too. So there it is. And you know, I don't, again, don't recommend building like this. Follow the rules on the FlexRC website or the, uh, the suggested build, and I think you'll have a good time with it. I didn't notice any sort of flight characteristics that threw me off. I didn't notice any pid tuning that was unusual. So I think if you're used to building and pid tuning and flying, this one won't cut you out by any stretch. Um, I'm sure it's got to be in aerodynamics. These cause resistance and therefore technically slow you down in some capacity. How much that is, who knows? You know, you'd have to have one of those wind tunnels or something like that, you know, multi-billion dollar setups that NASA has in order to figure that stuff out. But it does make for a cool design. It kind of reminds me of Batman. One of the questions I get a fair bit is about wiring. Um, OSDs are kind of escaping people, but basically the to, to, to verbally walk you through wiring in an OSD, you've got your signal that comes in from it comes to your camera. That's the generally the yellow wire. You can see mine here. And that yellow wire that comes from the camera has to go into the flight controller, which has the OSD chip on it, and it passes all the values through from the OSD, and then you pass that from the, the flight controller out to your VTX, which is what this little wire here is doing. I also tend to power my cameras from the VTX, and I do that because if the five volt regulator on the flight controller gives up the ghost or isn't, doesn't give me clean enough video, I got a secondary option of getting a five volt off of the VTX. And, and generally, even without this stack, I'll tend to power my camera from the VTX as well. It just gives us a second layer of getting clean power to the camera, therefore our video feed is a lot cleaner. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please leave those in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.